Okay, so we have this Hello World site. Um, now let's start making it more interesting. So the first thing I want to point out is that, and this is pretty cool, we are not restricted here to just writing, you know, plain English text. We can also do something like writing in this string, we can write HTML code. For example, if I were to do something like this and enclose this text in a HTML button tag, according to our Python code here, this is just another string like any other. So our Python code doesn't really care what this says, but as you can see, and as the browser is going to see, the browser's going to know how to interpret this as more than just plain text. So I think you can guess what's going to happen here, but let's see. Yeah, so as you can see, we now have a button on the screen. And that's because a browser like Chrome is designed to be able to interpret text like this as HTML and just and display the appropriate thing on screen that's what a browser does and we can just to see this from another perspective we can open up the inspector here and see the structure of our page we've got a normal HTML page and then within that we've got in the within the body we've got a button whose text is hello world exclamation point and then a closing button so notice how even though here all of this text is just treated as a single block but then the browser knows to parse this as ooh this is you know I've got a button here and then within that button I have some text content and then I'm gonna close the button so this is very cool and if you if you didn't know that, I'm telling you, it's objectively true that this is extremely cool. You should hopefully feel a tingle down your spine right now. And the reason why is this idea that we're writing code here, and I'm going to talk later about what all this code does, because a lot of it um, looks a little intimidating at first. but we're writing code here that literally produces other code, right? So inside of our code is more code. Inside of our Python program is an HTML, uh, you might say, program, or at least the outline of an HTML document. And the results show up like this. So I'm telling you that's cool, um, but you might also be wondering, you know, okay, but, but what's the point of this? Um, because you, you've been doing HTML already for a week or two, um, and previously it didn't involve all this complicated setup. Um, you know, we've got all this stuff, we've got this whole Google App Engine launcher thing, we go to the browser and we visit this weird local host port thing. Um, so what, why do we have to do all this? Why couldn't we just, you know, if I wanted, if I just want a button on the screen, there's no reason, in fact, to do any of this. I could just as easily do what you've been doing so far. So let's say I make a file, just a regular, I can just make a normal HTML file call it something like cookies.html and I can have it say whatever I want but you know let's do a button I love cookies and I can open that page in a browser by simply navigating to it and saying open file and here's my button and that wasn't so hard and I don't need any of this other 
stuff. I don't need this. I don't need a whole directory for it. And the URL looks a lot different. So in this case, it's just the, the word file, colon, slash, slash, and then the path to the local, the local path to where this file lives on my computer. So all that is, all that makes sense uh, intuitively in a more straightforward way than this. Like, what is this? And why do we have to do all of this? So I hope you're wondering that. You should be wondering that. And now I want to explain the answer to that. So why do we need all this additional infrastructure in place? What's the purpose of it? The answer comes down to the notion of static content versus dynamic content. So what I mean by that, by static what I mean is in this HTML file, this HTML file is, is static in the sense that it's unchanging. As I have to know in the moment when I'm writing this code exactly what I want the page to look like. And as soon as I'm done, I can put it out in the world, and that's great, but it's never, it's always going to look exactly like this. So if I wanted to have, say, a website about cookies with user accounts where each um, user sees a message like, you know, hello, cat lover 42 how are you today so 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 in this case cat lover 42 is the name of my user and or an example user and and i want each user i have millions of users and i have i want each person to see their own username here obviously so if i if i want that to happen with just html i would have to literally make a million HTML pages that are all almost the same, but just this username right here changes each time. And that's obviously not a feasible way of making that happen. The way to make it happen is I could have a program in another language, like, say, Python, which figures out the user's name and then creates HTML with their name inserted. So, you know, I could say, hello, plus username, plus the rest of the string. And now, and you know, I would make a variable called username and set it equal to um, so here I'm just, once again, hard coding something in here, but in reality what I would do is something like call some other routine out there somewhere called like fetch username from database which would be defined somewhere else, like maybe up here, and it would go and figure out the, the actual username of the current person, and then I would be able to insert that person's name into my text. So hopefully that makes sense, and maybe as just another real world example, let's say I go to YouTube. Um, obviously every time you visit YouTube, you see different content because you know, the top thing right here, trending. These are trending videos. So they're changing all the time. So at any given moment, when I visit YouTube, I'm not just seeing a hard-coded HTML page. I'm seeing an HTML page that was assembled on the fly in the moment just now, like seconds ago, I visited. And YouTube had to go through this whole process of... Um, looking in their database of all their videos and trying to decide which videos are currently trending using some trending algorithm and only then after they know which videos they're going to talk about are they able to like 
assemble um, the content that they were going to send back to my browser so that my browser could display this stuff on my screen. So when I visit YouTube, well, let's look at the let's look at the inspector on this, and this is going to be slightly scarily complicated, but okay, here's the div tag holding this video for this Jimmy Kimmel Spider-Man thing, and see if we can find. some real content that we can sort of hold on to. So I mean for example duration 217 in a little span so that's um, presumably the HTML that results in this little 217 above my mouse right here. Uh, now obviously there is nowhere in existence is there code for youtube.com that says span you know spider-man span tag equals span 217 close span tag right this would never be hard coded anywhere because YouTube in the moment doesn't know obviously that this is going to be the video that they're going to want to show me and that the time of the video, the duration of the video is 217. So all that just to say, just wanted to bring attention to um, the degree to which any modern, uh, pretty much any modern website you go to is really a web application, meaning that you're not looking at static content, you are looking at content that was dynamically assembled on the fly in the moment that you chose to visit the site. So what I want to do here in our project is we're going to make a little web app that displays fortune cookies for its users. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a site that every time you visit the site it says your fortune is blank and then blank is going to be some kind of fortune as if you just opened a fortune cookie and the important thing is that every time you visit the page you get a different fortune and so that means that we're not going to be able to hard code anything in an HTML file, we're going to have to dynamically generate the HTML that gets sent to the user so that we can give them a randomly selected fortune on each visit.